Milton Slayer, The Alchemist, where we discuss all things heavy metal and hard rock. And welcome to another edition of Midweek Maiden. This is where we get together in the middle of the week to talk some Iron Maiden. We haven't done a Midweek Maiden in some time. So to welcome us back to Midweek Maiden, I had to bring back a fan favorite to the Iron Maiden show, and that is Matthias. He is joining us from an undisclosed location on the outskirts of Stockholm, Sweden, somewhere. And for today's episode, uh, we are going to be doing an in defense of Dennis Stratton. For those who may not know, Dennis Stratton played guitar on the very first Iron Maiden record. And then he was rather quickly sacked. But we're going to get into all that. And Matthias is going to be sharing with us why he thinks Dennis Stratton was an important part of the early sound and development of Iron Maiden. So, Matthias, thank you for joining us here again at The Layer. Thanks for having me. All right, why don't you set us up a little bit, give us the uh, backstory here with Dennis Stratton, when and how does he come into the band? Uh, the backstory is that Iron Maiden had been signed to EMI in October, November 79. Back then they were a five piece. Uh, but by December same year, 79, there were only Dave, Steve and Paul left in the band. So they didn't have a, a rhythm lead guitar player, nor did they have a drummer. Uh, the, the, the drummer uh, before Clive, who came into the band uh, late December in 79, uh, Doug Sampson had a bit of health issues and they had this big contract, major label EMI. They knew they were going to tour and tour and tour. They knew that they uh, were going to play big festivals, opening up for for big bands, doing big shows. Uh, so uh, Doug Samson was a bit of an uh, a bit unreliable in that sense. Uh, the same thing was with the the lead rhythm guitar spot uh, beside Dave in the band, uh, and they have had a fairly huge number of guitar players coming and going alongside Dave. It was a guy called Dave Parsons playing in the band when they signed a contract with EMI, but uh, he was sacked. Uh, so uh, long story long, uh, I think Steve had heard about Dennis, who was at the time had played in a band called the Remus Down Boulevard. And what our maiden needed now for a recording of a, their debut album going out on tour, they needed a reliable rhythm lead player who could also sing backup vocals. And since they have had such a huge, like a, a evolving circus of guitar players coming and going, they needed someone who was a bit more pro, a guy who knew his stuff, was reliable, uh so steve uh asked uh, dennis to join the band and he did dennis at the time and still is <laughs> of course uh is uh, a, a few years older than the rest of the band members uh if my math is uh is fair he was 27 at the time when he joined the band which makes him about four or five years older than the rest of the guys. Not that much now, but for a bunch of guys in their younger uh, 20s, a five-year-old older guy is a bit much, I think. And that difference would prove to be one of the reasons why uh, they, he actually left the band eventually, in a way. But now I'm getting ahead of myself here. So uh, now Dennis is in the band and they ask Dennis, do you know of a really good drummer? Again, they had this big contract. They were going to record an album. 
and they had uh, were going to do that in a very short period of time. Dennis suggested they should bring in Clive Burr. Clive Burr at the time, if my facts are correct, wasn't really playing with anyone one special, uh, but he had been in Samson. Uh, and he had been in Samson before uh, Bruce was in the band. So they were never in the band at the same time. So within just a few, few weeks, they had Dennis, they had Clive. They started to rehearse uh, early January in, of 80. They did their first gig, I think, even the 1st of February, just like just a few weeks later after rehearsal with this new, brand new lineup. Uh, and they went into the studio to start to record the debut album just a few weeks later. I think um, six weeks or so after they first rehearsed with this new lineup, they start to record the album, which is, I mean, of course, Steve, Dave and Paul knew the material, but for Dennis and, uh, and Clive, this was all new, of course. So if you take that into consideration, that is quite feat to have a brand new lineup and to, uh, even though the songs were uh, written, of course, but to rehearse and record an album in that speed. That's quite impressive. Um, and what most people don't seem to know is that, I, let's be fair, I, th I think many casual fans or even more diehard fans of the band uh, frown upon Dennis Stratton and his time in the band, like that was a bad move. He should never have been there in the first place. And yes, they did ask Adrian Smith to, to join the band. Uh, he declined. He had his own band urchin, which he thought was coming up. Uh, so, but with all things in consideration, they got what they wanted. They wanted a, a, a stable guy who was a known, uh, knew how to uh, rehearse, learn things quickly. Another thing that most people don't really think about is what he brought to the band. He didn't write any songs in his, for his time in the band, but he really did work with what he had, which was a sense of melody. And uh, for example, Our Maiden had been a, a two guitar band for most of its time. But when a song like Phantom of the Opera, when that one was uh, conceived in the band, there was only one guitar player. And that wasn't Dave, that was a guy called Terry Wopram. So they had one, one guitar player and they had uh, a keyboard player named Tony, Tony Moore. So what Dennis did was that Maiden had, had uh, melody guitars, but they didn't really have that much what we today associate with our Maiden, like the, the harmony guitars. That was De most Dennis work. That what was what he brought into the band. And think about having a song like Phantom of the Opera with no guitar harmonies. That's a bit hard. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, and there are two major factors that makes me like to defend <laughs> a much frowned upon uh, Dennis Stratton, and that is. He brought harmonies to the band and he brought Clyde Burr to the band. What uh, were the reasons given when he was let go? I think the age oh, difference. Man. Yeah, I think the age difference was a bit of a problem. Uh, there have been, it's well documented that uh, Dennis and their manager, Rob Smallwood, didn't really meet eye to eye. Uh, Rod at the time thought that the band should be like a gang, a unit. But let's be fair for Dennis being pulled into the band as a pro, he, uh, he wasn't really, I guess, a part of that gang. 
he liked to socialize with with roadies and people outside the band. When they did the Kiss tour, uh, he hung out with people in the the Kiss crew, met the members of Kiss. Uh, and Rod saw this as if he wasn't really that interested in Iron Maiden. Mm. But for Dennis, it was just like his way of, of being. Uh, he had spoken himself about that. He He's a curious kind of guy. He's sociable. He likes to meet people and, and so on. And maybe the age difference was a bit of a, of a problem in that sense, that they were in different stages of their life. Uh, Dennis had been playing for a longer time than the other guys had. He was much more experienced. Uh, so I think that, and it's also very much documented that he had a taste for softer rock music than yeah. the other guys of the band That's had. The and I mean, there, there are, yeah, there, there, there is, uh, I mean, if you listen to the vocal harmonies, on the debut album, that's that's Dennis. Yeah, we were and, talking uh, off camera. Not about... all of. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and it's. Uh, I mean, not all of them are tough metal harmonies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were. But at talking... the same time, again, take Fan take Phantom of the Opera as, as an example. His his uh, vocal harmonies uh, in Phantom of the Opera is just just great stuff basically yeah. uh running free to uh maybe the 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 vocal harmonies in the uh, title track our maiden is, is isn't really that good or suiting for the song and uh, it's been uh, recorded uh steve saying that uh, uh he was working by himself with the uh, engineer in the studio doing all these uh vocal harmonies yeah and steve's I think the quote is that he made us sound like Queen or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Eagles, <laughs> and that yeah. wasn't really acceptable. Yeah, and we talked about this off camera. That was one of the things that, that I kind of thought was cool about the first record was that there were those harmonies and especially in Phantom of the Opera. And yeah, mm. sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I always heard the story was that, yeah, you know, he was more into like the Eagles and the vocal harmonies and stuff like that mm. so how long did he so he did he did tour with the band then after the album was released how long was he touring but he did all the tours he did all the tours and they uh he was sacked or left a band depending on who you ask dennis himself have, have said i think that he knew his time was over and that he left a band some others say, like Steve, that they had to let him go or sack him just because the differences in uh, tastes in style of music was too far apart from, from what they were trying to uh, want to, to make. Uh, he was let go in October 80. So he was in the band for less than a year like 10 months or so but he did all the tours with the band uh he did a uh, all of the the kiss dates and so on uh, and aiden was in the band i think they did a tour in 80 later october with adrian in the band okay so it was kind of quick but at the same time if you think of it he he did make quite a mark on our maiden during this time all right well here's a question for you are there so since he toured for the band for a little while after the debut album was released was there anything that they were playing live at that time that would land up on killers so you get to hear dennis playing on something outside of the stuff that was on the debut album are there any recordings of him playing other stuff besides what he played on the debut album yeah, there are bootlegs, of course, and uh, it's also uh, when they recorded the first album, they had already put out a few songs. There was this compilation album that Dennis isn't on, but that had Sanctuary and had Rothschild. And those two songs, the, the band thought that we have already released them. And these two songs were fan favorites. 
So they were like songs that they regularly played in their ordinary set when Dennis was in the band still. So yes, there is Rothschild and there is uh, Sanctuary. And uh, there should be an early version from, I like to think, uh, you caught me a bit off guard here, but I think they did an mm -hmm. early version of Killers too uh during the later part of uh, the 80s tour i think they did killers at reading 1980 i hope i hope i'm right here but i think made they did fans come at him in the comments if he's wrong <laughs> 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 made it fans going away what are you crazy you know <laughs> He's cr that that swedish guy he's crap why do you keep bringing him you don't know anything about our <laughs> Unleash the Iron yeah. Maiden fans. <laughs> your cre your credibility on the Iron Maiden forum is uh, if you've got that I'm one out, wrong. I'm out gonna... on the limb here. <laughs> no, that's great because I had no idea that uh, I didn't realize he came into the band so close to the making of the record. Uh, I didn't even realize. So who who plays on the Soundhouse EP? Who who's on that? uh there is only officially there's only dave murray playing on okay. that uh, that that uh that single was released the autumn of 79 but it was recorded almost a year earlier uh and the guitar player playing with dave you, you it's it's obvious for anyone to hear that there is two different guitar sounds and two different guitar players doing the leads. And uh, they had this guy called Mad Mac uh, who had this dog, <laughs> apparently. Uh, uh, he was famous for having a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but there are like old, older, there are old photographs of that lineup with the band in Cambridge where they recorded uh Sandals tapes uh so it's uh, fairly uh safe to say that uh, mad mac was the guy playing uh with dave okay. on Sandals tapes but it wasn't dennis yeah all right well it's certainly it's it's interesting to to think about because he is kind of this lost when you think about the the history of Maiden and the people who have played, I mean, they've had a lot of guys before the first record came out. But once the first record came out, there really hasn't been that many shifts within the in the band lineup. And I think Dennis Stratton is probably the most easily forgotten you yeah. know, guy in the in the history of the band. And especially, yeah, again, the the sort of the story that history tells is that. He didn't like to sing type of music. He liked the Eagles and stuff like that and wanted it to be the harmonies and his just stylistically wasn't into the heavier uh, type of music. Mm -hmm. But it is sort of interesting to ponder and to get more of the, the backstory <coughs> of Dennis. So any final thoughts on that uh, you want us to lay out here in defense of Dennis Stratton? Or have you said it all? No, I, I think <laughs> we've defended him well enough. <laughs> Okay. Uh, All right. Well, I mean, let's be fair. Uh, the, the guy, the guy brought in Clyde Burr. Yeah. Uh, he did guitar harmonies that are today associated so strongly with the Maiden sound that uh, that in itself is is uh, is enough to say in his defense. All right. Well, there you go. You guys, let out there, let us know in the comments. What you think? Uh, what do you What do you think of Dennis Stratton's contribution to the band? Uh, what uh, What could it have been if he had stayed with the band? Or just let us know in general what you guys think of uh, Dennis Stratton and what he uh, added to the Iron Maiden sound and legacy. All right, I'd like to thank Matthias for joining me here at the Lair for another midweek Maiden. I have a feeling that we will see him again at some point in the future. And he's always welcome here. Thanks again. Everybody leave your comments down below. And until we see you again, make sure you stay heavy, stay metal.